In the last lecture, we created the interface for the token repository and also the implementation for the token and this method inside the token repository now gives us a string of the JWT token. We now have to use this information by injecting this inside the application. So let's open the solution explorer and let's inject this inside program.cs. I'll come to the line where I am injecting my repositories and in a new line, I will say builder.services.add scoped of type i token repository. When I call this, give me the implementation for the token repository. And with that, we have injected the i token repository. Now we can use this inside the controller. So we will have to inject this to the controller. So expand the constructor and we will say I token repository, inject that, create a name and press control dot to create and assign a private read only property. So we can now use the token repository inside the login method over here. So the token repository, if we call it and it only has one method which is the create JWT token. It needs two properties that we want to pass. It needs the user object and it also needs the list of roles that this user has. We have the user object already because we found it using their email but we don't have the roles yet. So let's get the roles for this user and that's really easy to do as well because we have the user manager class. So before we actually create the token, we get the roles for this user. So we can call the user manager class. So await user manager dot get roles async method and it takes the user object. So we have the user object with us and we can capture that in the roles uh, property. So create a new property called roles and have that over here. So this will be the I list of type string and that's nullable. So we have to check first. So let's check if we have roles not equal to null. We want to create the, the JWT token. So have that inside of the if statement. And to the create JWT token now, we can pass the user object that we have and also the roles object, which is an I list. So convert that to list. So we are passing both information to the create JWT token method. And as a response, we should get a new JWT token. So I'll say variable JWT token is equal to this. We can now use this response to return an OK response with the token back. And we can now get rid of this OK property because if roles are not null, we will again return a bad request. And you can change the wordings if you want to. So now we are returning the JW token. Uh, but for a future purpose, we can also return some other information. So let's create a class for this one as well. Something like a login response DTO. So solution explorer inside the models, inside the DTO folder, I will create a new class. So add a new class and I will call this the login response DTO dot CS. Let's say for now we only have one property which is string type and it will be the JWT token. So instead of passing it directly to the uh, to the OK object, to the OK response, we will create a new login response type and then populate it. So we'll create a response which is a new login response DTO. And inside that we only have the JWT response, the JWT token property, and that gets its value from the line above. So now we can pass the response instead of the OK, because later on we can use this login response DTO to add other fields like the username, information, email, uh, or any other information that we want to pass as well. 
so by doing that we have our login method ready and it's now time to test this functionality so save the changes and run application so the application is running and now I can expand on the login method to try it out and pass the information that I have for the username registered. So we have the reader user at nzvox.com and the password is reader at 123. So let's execute the statement. So we get the 200 successful response back along with the information of the token over here. So we have the JWT token property and we also get the token over here which looks like a very big string. So that's the token and let's copy that and see if we can use this token now to actually log in and access the method. So for that we will now have to use postman for some time until we incorporate the uh, the authentication feature inside Swagger. So for that, for the time being, we will use Postman. So I will use the plus button to create a new request. And this will be the post request because we want to access the login functionality. So we have the token already so i don't even have to go to the login functionality i have the token generated i want to see if we are able to access regions so i'll click on execute and it says we have a 401 unauthorized because we are not passing a jwt token so let's use this information through postman so it's going to api regions and this is a get call but now we want to pass the authorization header as well and that's why for the time being we are using postman but we will add the authorization attribute inside swagger as well so in the headers we want the authorization header and as a value for it we want to pass the token but it has to be prefixed with the keyword bearer space and now we have to copy the token and paste it over here after the bearer so basically you have the authorization and this is the value for the authorization header let's see what happens if we now send this request so after sending this request along with the authorization attribute we have the response as a 200 success response and all the regions coming back successfully if we now disable the authorization request that means in the next request it will not send this bearer token if i send it now as you can see here it gives me the 401 unauthorized response back so with the token now that we have the token generated we have to send this token along with the request so that we can able we are able to access the resources and it is the authorized attribute on the regions controller so if i open the regions controller we have the authorized attribute that is pr protecting this controller from any access or any access from users who are unauthenticated and don't have a correct uh, token with uh, with them so as a as another test i can also just you know malfunction this uh, token by deleting some bits and see what happens if we are sending a wrong token over here so let's send this and even then because it wasn't a correctly formed token it wasn't a token that our application generated it came back with a 401 uh, response which is an unauthorized response so now that we know that we need a correct token so that we are able to access the resources uh, as part of the authorized attribute that we have. Now in the next lecture, let's come back to see how we can achieve role based authorization. So we will come back in the next lecture and understand that.